Okay, so what happens when you have the director of the King's Speech has Russell Crowe, in, otherwise known as Gladiator, or Jor-El, if you prefer, and he's just awesome. And you have Wolverine in it, and you have Catwoman in it. I mean, the actors and actresses who play them. And it's just, this film has such a great cast. So does this movie live up to what the, the caliber of the cast and the director are, or does it fall flat? The answer to that question is, this film totally lives up to the caliber of the cast and raises their caliber to levels I've never seen before. As far as, like, I've never seen Hugh Jackman act the way he did in this movie. He's always a good actor, he's always very solid, but in this movie, he owns it. He is better than he ever was as Wolverine, and I know that some people are like, blasphemy! He's perfect as Wolverine, yes. But in this movie, he brings something to it that everyone can appreciate, not just comic book fans. He is perfectly convincing at suffering. Perfectly convincing at wanting to do the right thing, taking on the burden while his character takes on, and just want to be redeemed. And that's all he conveys it so well. And he sings amazingly. And I liked Russell Crowe's movie. I know people gave him crap for singing. Like, oh, you didn't sing well. Stop being a music snob. I mean, Russell Crowe is actually in a band, and he is awesome. I'm sorry, he just is. Just get over it. Just look at how awesome he looks, and just say, "You're a good singer, man." I can't sing that well, so I'm not going to judge you that way. But anyway, he's good in this movie, even. And Anne Hathaway, she is amazing in this movie. She suffers. She's, I mean, the scene where she sings the song, where, you know, the trailer's just like, this hell I'm living in. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. That's a, that looks like an amazing scene. Watch the movie. And I was like, just cry, cry. <laughs> I mean, I know I'm laughing about it now, but in the movie, I, I swear I was crying. I was like, you broke my heart, Anne Hathaway. I, I mean, you were amazing at that. And the way she sings it's so perfect. And that's one of the things that this film does best is from the director. Tom Hooper said that he wanted to do it where they had to sing as they act, and so they filmed them up close, and I like that. Some people will make fun of that, and I see why you'd make fun of it, but guess what? It also reminds me of what Nolan did with the Dark Knight trilogy as far as you see Bruce Wayne's face a lot more than you did in the Burton Batman movies, and you get to see Bruce Wayne suffer, and you get to feel all the suffering with him. In this film, you get to see their suffering, you get to see their raw emotion as they sing, and they're amazing at singing. And could they have shown more stuff while they're singing? Yes, but they show just enough of other stuff and enough close-ups on their face, and I like seeing close-ups on their face. I'm feeling their emotions, and I'm like, I get you. And I appreciate that they were bold and did that. It makes the film so much better, so much richer. It just, it makes this musical a very personal movie. Now you're wondering, but there's all these other cast members, aren't you talking about them? They're, they're all good or great, as far as the ones that matter, and I was like, so I was just, I don't want to waste your time telling you all of them. I'm just going to say the acting in this movie is spot on, the direction is spot on, and as for the special effects, there are some weaknesses with the special effects, like the scenery stuff, like the set design and everything, it looks good for the most part, except for there are some shoddy CGI shots, and what I mean by that is the CGI doesn't look too good at first in certain scenes, but then like five seconds later, the scene looks perfect, and it's fine. It didn't bother me that much. It's just a little nitpicky thing, and when you have a movie this great, I'm going to notice a little flaw here or there, because the rest of the movie's great. But and when it comes to, like, the plot, there's a lot of coincidences that tie these people together things, but it's not, like, nothing awful and nothing just stupid. So, I mean, it didn't bother me. And there were some, like, instant things that happened that were really, really quick, like, love story where it's just like, ooh, sorry for the first time in my life was totally changing. You can say it's a cliche, but it's also, like, Roman and Juliet where it's just instant love, and that's fine. It didn't bother me because the actor and the actress that have that happen totally believable, the way they handle it, the way they sing about it. And then there's another girl in his love triangle, and I actually sympathize with her character more than those two, but I still appreciate those characters, which shows you that no matter who you are, you can either appreciate these two more, or you can appreciate her more. There's someone for everyone. This film ha is very long, and that's a big problem that most people have with it. If you watch it, the first time I wasn't as big of a fan of it, I loved it, but I was going to take off some points because of how long it was. Watch it the second time, I realized they didn't need every scene they had. And it is long, but if it really just shows our attention span is really short lately. If you give this movie, you, like, you pay attention to it like you should, and you just let the music take you in, and the actors' performances and the actresses' performances, and just let the music and everything just envelop you, you're not going to care how long it is. You just have to let go of your sense of time just be like, okay, this is a long movie, I can take it. Just like you do when you watch the Lord of the Rings trilogy, just say... Time's gonna be, it's gonna be a long movie. I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna love it. I'm not gonna complain about time and be annoying like other people. <laughs> it doesn't matter that's long. This movie is beautiful and I loved it and I felt every emotion with them. And so let's talk about the story though. The story, of course, I won't tell you a whole lot because 
the story is one of those things where it's like, there's this one storyline, there's this storyline, which leads to that storyline, which leads to that storyline, and so on and so forth. But basically, most of the story is about Jean Valjean, which is a guy who's a prisoner, and he's going to be on parole for the rest of his life, around the French, in the movie set, around the French Revolution, later in the film, but it's like before that, but how bad conditions were. And of course, he has this thing with Russell Crowe, Russell Crowe is in charge of over him, and he's just like, you know, Russell Crowe's a D-back to him, basically. And that's all well and fine. And so, you know, there's that tension immediately between them. And of course, when Hugh Jackman's character is freed, Jean Valjean, he goes and he commits, no one wants him because he's got these papers and it has the fact that he's a criminal and no one wants him. And of course, he runs into other people and eventually he finds this priest who tells him that God cares about him and shows him God's love for the first time. And yes, this movie is about God's love. And if that bothers you, get over it. Because that's what it's about. And even if you don't believe and God, still, you have to admit this is a beautiful film, it's well acted, and that you can buy it in the context of this film, because they they just convey it so well, and John Valjean is such a likable character, because he bears his burden of being this criminal, and then finding out that people, there is a love higher than what he's known, and he, you can see in his eyes, and you can see himself heartbroken, he's like, how could I have done all I've done, and there would be someone who loved me, and spared me from what I deserved, and this guy has suffered some stuff he didn't deserve, and then he redeems himself, and then he goes and does something that he bears the burden for the rest of his life. And that's just, it's a great story. There's more to it than that, but they tell you any more, it'll spoil it if you haven't heard the Lame Myth story. And if you do know the Lame Myth story, you know where it's going, so you don't need to hear it from me. I enjoy the story. Is the ending thing, there was some controversy with the ending as far as some people said the ending was way too long. And the first time I watched it, I kind of thought that. But then I would, but I still thought at the very end, the last shot was beautiful and perfect. And watching it, rewatching it, the ending was, it's not one of those short endings, and I'm fine with that. It's a longer ending, and could have been shorter. They could have maybe, but I enjoyed it for what it was, and I thought that the very last shot was so beautiful. And there's so much, so many good shots in those scenes towards the end that I was like, yes, I'm fine with the ending being longer. And I prefer it to those endings like Iron Man 3, where they just totally throw everything in your face and say, that's the end of the movie. Accept everything we just said. Don't ask any questions, even though there's so many logical problems with it. This movie gives you an ending that's satisfactory. Gives you going, this is beautiful. I love this movie. And for all of these reasons, despite its flaws, I'm going to give this movie 5 out of 5. This movie is steak. The first steak rating I've given on my online reviews. And I just, as long as you go into this movie, you know it's a musical. You like the cast members. <laughs> and you like the fact that it's more of a personal musical than usual. You can see all their emotions. And if you're willing to take it just for how long it is, then you should love it. I mean, there are problems in this movie, yes, but I love this film, and I'm not a huge musical person, musical fan, but I did love this movie, and that shows you what kind of movie this is. It's more powerful than just if you're a musical fan. So, I love this movie. Hope you enjoyed it, too.